Howdy y'all, I'm Fran Agulto with the developer relations team here at WP Engine. We're focused on headless WordPress. Super stoked to be here today as usual, because in this video tutorial, we're gonna learn how to create sitemaps in headless WordPress using Next.js and the WP sitemap REST API plugin. Now just a quick note, if you do need a foundational understanding of Next.js and headless WordPress, I'm going to embed a link in this YouTube video so that you can follow it because it's taught by my main man, Jeff Everhart, and he'll get you up to speed. Now, let's start off by asking ourselves, what exactly is the sitemap and what benefits do they give? Now, an XML sitemap is a list of URLs that you want to be publicly available, and it helps search engines crawl your website by giving them an exact map of all your content. There's also metadata you can pull into your sitemap, which are listed in sitemaps protocol, such as when a page was last modified, video information, and images. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like really quickly. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do in order to expose my sitemap that's baked into my traditional WordPress site is going to my WordPress install here. So let's move over there. Now, in my, I'm in my settings right now. If I grab my WordPress URL right here, copy that, and then go over to my search bar, embed that in there, and then you're gonna append the path slash WP dash sitemap XML, there it is. And there's my sitemap. There you have, uh, a sitemap already embedded into your WordPress install. Now, some of the benefits that you want in um, with the sitemaps, some of the benefits essentially are faster indexing. So XML sitemaps will communicate with search engines. Uh, they can submit your sitemap into the Google Search Console and that helps get pages on your site indexed much faster with search engines. Now this increases, of course, your rank in search engine page results. There's also automatic update notification. Now Google will receive automatic notifications when you publish new content or modify existing content. And then categorization of your content, which will allow Google to know which pages go under which category so there's no guesswork. Awesome, so obviously this is super optimal for your search rankings. Now, let's go ahead and figure out how to do this in a headless fashion. Let's go back to our WordPress install here. And the first thing we're going to want to do is take care of one plugin. I have already done this. It's the WP Sitemap REST API plugin. And if you're following along, what you're going to want to do is go over to my good friend Dimpankar, my caps, GitHub page, slash WP Sitemap REST API. Now, thank you. He built this plugin and he helped with this tutorial, what you're gonna to wanna to do is essentially click onto the code here on the green button, download the zip, and once you have that downloaded, go back to your WordPress install, like so, and then go to plugins, add that new, then you're gonna upload the plugin, choose the file, and there you have it. Now, once this is installed, what happens is you're gonna expose out of the box, four endpoints. Now, the endpoints that are exposed are total pages, author, taxonomy, and post. It's that easy peasy. So let's see what data we get back uh, when we go ahead and search for these paths within this sitemap REST API plugin. So if I go back to my search bar here in the browser, and then let's go total pages. So if I append the path with WP slash JSON, there it is, slash sitemap slash V1 total pages, I get an object back of what the those paths reflect. So there you go, easy peasy. Now, that's all we have to do. Let's go over to the front end in our Next.js application. I'm over in my terminal now because we're gonna start manipulating our front end with Next.js. But before we dive into the code, we're gonna in need to install one dependency that we're gonna use in this tutorial within our next 
Node.js project, and this dependency is the Axios package. And Axios will just give us some helper functionality to make XML HTTP requests from our Next.js front end. And to do this within terminal, as you can see, simply input npm install and then Axios. This will pull down the package. And once you hit return, you're all set to go. I've already done this. So let's dive into the code to make sure it's installed. I'll go over to my package JSON here. There it is, Axios is installed right there, so we're good to go. Now the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add a couple of environment variables because there's a couple of endpoints we need to have set up as variables in our project before we create the functions. Now in the root of the project, I created a .env.local file, as you can see, right over here, okay? And within this um, env file, I have a couple of endpoints, and one is how many items per sitemap I would like. The next is my public front end URL that this project's gonna point to. In this case, I'm using the development environment in Next.js, which runs off port 3000. And then thirdly, my public WordPress URL, which is the buddy demo.wpengine.com that I had for my install. Okay, now we're all set. Now the next thing we wanna do is we want um, now that we've added these, we want our project to have access to them via the process.env object. So how we're gonna do that is, in the root of the project, I've created a utils folder. And in this utils folder, I've created a variables.js file. Now, as you can see here, I've set the variables we are naming right here above needed so that Next.js can access these endpoints from our .env.local file with the process.env object. Awesome. Now that we have our environment variables all set up on our front end here, we're gonna need a few functions in order to dynamically grab the total amount of WordPress URLs to make them available to our sitemap index page and show them on the browser as well as showing our Next.js front end URLs. So that's a lot, so let's take the first step thing we need to do first is create a folder, which I've done called lib. And in the root of the project, within this lib folder, we create a file called gettotalcounts.js. And then here is the code within this file. Now what's going on here is, is essentially, I'm importing Axios as the dependency that we installed for helper functionality. And then I'm importing my WordPress URL from our variables file. And then this is basically a, fex, a fe, excuse me a fetch function that is grabbing the total pages from our WordPress site and returning the data in an array right here. And then if I want to exclude any um, items from the sitemap, I can um, add it to the exclude items array as commented right here. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is we're gonna to need to create a way to get the sitemap pages and return them for the specific type. So back in that utils folder that we created right here, we wanna create a file called getSitemapPages.js, which I've already done. And what's going on in this file is this is importing the variables right here that we uh, declared in our variables.js file. Then right here it exports a default function called get sitemap pages. And we're passing in that item right here from the total counts function we created. Now, once those are passed in, the front end URL is appended right here with the sitemap and the item name and the XML path. Then we join these with the XML tags with the slug right here from WordPress. We now have the necessary function in place to generate our sitemap pages and the total number of them. Now the next step is to create a sitemap index page. So we're gonna take advantage right here of Next.js's page-based file routing. So right here in the pages directory, I went ahead and dropped a sitemap.xml.js file. Now with Next.js's page-based file routing, it means that any file I add to the pages directory in my project will correspond automatically to a route 
that is available, okay? So that's what we're doing right here. And within this file right here, let's take it from the top. The first thing to notice right here is at the top of a file, I'm importing the get site map pages and the get total counts um, functions we created to generate the WordPress page types and total counts. Then I have this exporting default um, as a default function. Next right here, we're doing an export async function with a get server side props convention that in Next.js allows us to utilize server side rendering since we want this page to be dynamic on every request so the sitemap is up to date, okay? Then I copied down here essentially a <clears throat> sitemap um, example and formatted it to that XML tag and link to show up on the browser with the response header and set the page right response set um, to load and end with the props returned right here. Okay, so stoked. That was, a, that was a lot. So now let's go ahead and try it in the terminal to see what we see on the browser. Go back to terminal, npm run dev. That'll populate my Next.js front end. Now let's go back to our browser here and in the search bar, go for localhost 3000 and then go to the path sitemap.xml because that's what we named our file to route to it. Awesome, now we have a dynamic sitemap in headless WordPress set up as you can see here with our URLs. Now the next step is to add the ability to grab that URL of the sitemap path and that have that route to its actual detailed page. So let's do that. All right then, so let's go back into the code to go ahead and execute this. Now back in Visual Studio Code, we really need a couple of things to make the dynamic routes work for our sitemap. First, we need to wait a way to generate the sitemap paths to their detailed page. So back in the utils folder we created earlier, we're gonna create a generate sitemap paths.js uh, file, which is right here, which I've already done. And within this file, um, let's go ahead and go over what this code block is doing. So essentially what's happening is this file imports our front end URL from our variable, and then it exports a default function here that passes in an array. The items variable is mapped, okay? Then it returns a single item right here. Then we have an uh, XML tags that dynamically grab the appropriate item and concatenate them to the front end URL, as well as the date the page was last modified, as you can see. Now that we have this function needed, let's create the dynamic route page. Now Next.js makes it real easy to create a dynamic file, okay? So how that works is if we have a parameter like a slug that changes upon request a lot, the naming convention is the bracket syntax. So in the uh, pages directory right here, I created a folder called sitemap. And in this folder, we have a bracketed file with the name slug.js. And within this file, there's actually quite a bit of code going on here. So let's break this down. What's happening is that we are importing all of our functions right here at the top that we need access to for the sitemaps dynamic paths right here. Now a default function is exported right here calling it sitemap tag page. We're gonna return null because then we have an async function to get the server side props right here. Okay, and then we want this function to be server side rendered as well because on um, every request, we want it to be up to date. Then in the response object, um, we're gonna pass in the params, which is the slug in this case right here. Now our variable is XML, which is equal to the slug and ends with .xml. Now, if it's not an XML slug and path, we return it to not be found right here. Now, in the middle of the file, we declare a numer uh, right here. We declare numerous, numerous, excuse me, numerous variables that we name as we need to set the array of slugs, the type, the page, 
number using uh, regex essentially, which extracts the number from the string and the possible types and total counts of those types. Now, lastly, we validate this to see if this is properly aligned with our sitemap index page right here, as highlighted. Otherwise, we throw a 404. Now, once that is done, we have our XML tags formatted and the appropriate responses right here. Now, let's try this out and see how this works in the browser. So let's go ahead back to the terminal here. Let's cut the server. Then let's hit npm run dev again. Go back to the browser right here. OK, there we are. And then within the browser, <clears throat> let's just grab uh, the first one right here, the sitemap. Actually, no, you know what? Let's grab post sitemap XML. Let's go ahead and grab this. Copy that, open it up with another browser and put it in the search bar. OK, stoked. Awesome. Now we have the details of that post page URL. Great. The next thing we finally need to do is account for the Next.js pages. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now we need to account for our Next.js pages on our front end. So in order to do this, let's go back to the code in our pages directory. Let's go back here to Visual Studio Code. <clears throat> and within our pages directory here, we're going to add a file called sitemap nextjs.xml.js. Long-winded, I know. <laughs> and in this code block, let me explain here what's going on essentially. So at the top of this file here, we are importing React and it's um, it's and FS to access local storage essentially. Now next, we're going to return null as we right here as we want to not render or return anything in the component. Instead, we're going to export this get server side props function as a const. And then we're going to pass in the response object right here, just like we did in the sitemap index page to server side render for fresh up to date sitemap data. And then we're going to declare our base URL right here. And in this case, obviously using the dev server off localhost 3000. Okay. Now, next, once we set the FS to our static paths right here, we're going to enable a way within the object to filter through our static pages in Next.js with an array and input which ones we do not want on the sitemap. So I just added the default pages Next.js comes with as an example right here. <clears throat> OK. And then next, we need to account for the dynamic paths that we have in our Next.js apart from WordPress. So I set a const for our dynamic paths, and I made it equal to an array right here where we get our base URL and hard code the path. Now, I just named it name, but you can name it in any relation to whatever your dynamic route file is. And then the last things we need to do are set the const right here for all our paths and iterate through them with a spread operator and expand them all out in the array. Now, finally, we generate the sitemap in XML format with the appropriate response headers returning our props right here. Whoops. And then returning our props. Stoked. OK. Now we have all the paths and URLs in our Next.js front end. Let's go ahead and now combine the two. What we need to do is we need to just add our Next.js pages to our sitemap index file with, where we're getting our WordPress pages. So now, in order to do that, we simply go back to the sitemap.xml.js file, which is our sitemap index. And then we are going to go ahead and embed that right under here. Hit save. Now, as you can see, the one difference in this file is the URL we added http localhost 3000 forward slash sitemap nextjs.xml in our XML element, uh, the location, this is going to allow us to show the next pages, Next.js pages on our sitemap index. So let's see this in action in the browser. Going back to our browser, let me cut the server and then run it again. 
gonna go into the browser and then we type in our sitemap index path and there it is there right here as you guys can see our sitemap next.js pages now that we have our sitemap for next.js pages in our index let's see what the details of our pages are in next.js when we follow that url so let me highlight it real quick here and then go to it and boom stoked look we have all our next.js pages when we follow that url awesome all right y'all pretty jam stoked because we're done with this walk you through tutorial and we hope that you take away the ability to understand the importance of sitemaps and the value of utilizing them to inform search engines of your site's page and path layout now again this is just one way of approaching sitemaps in headless wordpress i would love to hear your thoughts on your own approaches and builds hit me up in our discord and i will post links within this youtube page of my github repository of the finished code and dimpankar mycaps wordpress rest api plugin repository and until we see you again happy coding